Well, you might have seen some demos that I've done of these three pedals from Torino Audio. These are analog food bypass studio grade pedals that you can connect. They are modular. So you can basically design your like big signature pedal with everything you want in it. Well, mine are not connected right now because I want to do an experiment. Up until quite recently, I prefer to have the boost in front of an overdrive pedal. But now I kind of prefer to have it like closer to the amp. So in this video, I want to try to use all of these three pedals in different positions to see what sounds best. I'm guessing that it will sound different and there will probably not be just one correct answer here. So let's throw these pedals on the floor and let's start playing. And the pedals are on the floor. Luckily yesterday I got myself a DC7 from Keox so that I can power them here in my home studio. If they are connected together though, the pedals, you can power all the pedals with just one of these and that's really handy. So my signal chain is my TMG Ronnie Scott going into the Rev D20, which again is going into my SRI2 from Fluid Audio and then into Logic Pro and it sounds like this. So right now I set it up so I'm starting with the fuzz, then the boost, then the overdrive. When you have the boost before the overdrive pedal, you are basically just increasing the gain in the overdrive pedal and overall you get more sustain and saturation in your sound. First let's hear the pedals by themselves. Here's the first pedal. And the boost. Overdrive. And let's kick in the boost. There's a tiny bit of volume boost, but mostly it's just saturation and sustain, and it makes the sound a bit thicker. It's a very pleasant sound to play with, and it makes it a lot funnier to play, to be honest. Okay, let's try to switch places. Okay, so this is the same settings. Let's play the overdrive first and then add the boost. I'll play that back for you really quick so you can hear the difference. There's definitely a more of a volume boost when you are placing the boost after the overdrive. And I think that's the general idea of placing a boost after the overdrive to raise the volume. But something that I learned when I got the King of Tone from Analog Man, it's not necessarily to use the boost to make the volume higher, but to complement the overdrive pedal and to also simulate that your amp is breaking up. So what I want to do now, I want to dial down the volume. I don't want a volume boost when I have both pedals on. I just want to balance them so I get kind of a three dimensional sound, which is kind of a secret trick that I've seen some people do. Right now we shouldn't see a boost in levels and also I don't necessarily want more gain, I just want a richer sound. So let's listen and see how it works. <laughs>
Also, you could hear now that you can use the overdrive and the boost pedal to kind of smoothen out the fuzz pedal if you want to do that. I definitely think this is a good trick by combining these two and to have the boost simulate a driven amp. Let's hear it alone, by the way. When I was touring, I always had some sort of boost pedal on all the time. You know, at every venue, you're not allowed to push an amp to the breaking point. So I set it really low, the amp I mean, and then I used a boost pedal to simulate that the amp is breaking up. And when I want a clean sound, like a dead clean sound, I just play a lot lighter. So if I dig in with this boost pedal on, you can hear that it's quite broken up actually. But when I pick carefully, it's super clean. Hopefully that was useful, definitely check out the Kickstarter, there's still a way to go, but I highly recommend these pedals. I haven't tried them all, but these three are fantastic, and from what I've seen and heard of the other ones, they are great too. So there's a link down below that you can follow, they are not too pricey, and the sound is phenomenal, and they are a lot of fun to build and put together if you want to do that. Okay, thanks for watching and goodbye!